Notion just dropped a massive UI design update and in this video I'm going to show you everything that changed, some smaller updates you might have missed and what I personally like and don't like about the recent changes. And the first and most obvious visual difference is the database views. So as you can see it looks a lot cleaner in my opinion and what they've done is basically remove the lines in between the views as well as in between the properties and they also got rid of the calculate option that was always here at the bottom under each property and the only way now to add a new database entry is by clicking on this button so yeah essentially they've just cleaned up the way that database views are being shown and displayed now the next biggest update is when you click add property it will show this new property menu which does look a lot cleaner and feels more intuitive but there is something that you're going to have to get used to which is normally you can just go ahead and type in the property that you want and then it will show up but in this case you have to search for it over here so you have to click on this magnifying glass in order to find the property that you're looking for because whatever you type in here at the top will be the name of your property so as you can see i can just type in name of the property and click on the property that i want and it will automatically have the name and that's also another thing when you select a property usually it pops open the property where you can then immediately rename it but in this case you click on add property first add in the name of the property and then you click on the property that you want so that will be something that i would need to get used to because my muscle memory is sort of trained to just add property type in what i want and click it and then immediately rename but now i sort of have to do everything in reverse but this does make sense and it does feel more intuitive the next big visual change is the settings so it's not called the database menu anymore it's now just settings and the icon is also different you'll also notice here is a new icon you can click on this to minimize this whole section which i actually like because for example here on my productivity journal i have these charts where i can compare my sleep to my focused hours and whatnot but in this case i'm not actually going to add new database entries or make changes so it makes sense to actually hide all of this so that i can clean it up so i really like that feature but if we go in here inside of the database settings then here we have the properties that is relating to the view so basically what you see here on the database and then the properties here at the bottom refers to the database settings and then another big one is the property visibility is different from edit properties so if you want to change the order of properties and choose which ones you want to show or hide you do them here as you would normally but the difference is you cannot click them so usually you can click on them and it will open up the property where you can edit the name you can make changes but this one is just for reordering the properties and choosing what you want to show or hide and then the one here at the bottom is for editing them so here you can go in click on the property and then you can edit it as normal so yeah that is definitely going to be something to get used to but it also makes more sense and then they've completely removed the customized database section which i don't really think people were using that much and they just added all of these options here at the bottom under more settings so this also makes a lot more sense now another big change which i'll also have to get used to is you can now edit the properties right inside of the property menu instead of it opening up the database menu or database settings and then opening up the property over here so normally you would click click on edit property and then it would open up this so you, your eyes and your focus basically has to move whereas now it just stays in the same place so it actually makes more sense and uh, i do like this new update it's just something that i'm going to have to get used to now let's actually go through the property menu because you're going to be using this a lot more as this got a massive upgrade so underneath edit property you also have change type so you can turn the property into something else except relations rollups and formulas this is personally something i don't like i don't understand why you would not add those options in here because there was also a really good glitch that you can do where if you're using currencies in your formula you could create the formula turn it into a number property change the, the format to us dollar or whatever currency you're using and then change the number property back into a formula and then all the numbers would automatically be updated to the currency so it will automatically have the dollar symbol and the commas next to the three zeros so that was something that i actually used <laughs> quite often um, is just turning properties into formulas but for some reason you can't do that anymore hopefully they add that but 
yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, you can only turn it into the basic properties inside of this section and not properties inside of this one, which includes the button as well. So yeah, that is a bit weird, but I guess Notion has the reason for doing that. And then we have filter. So you can just click this and the database view will automatically filter according to this property. And then also sort, same thing, except now it has these two options. So you can just directly from here sort it either ascending or descending. So it's just a lot faster and this makes a lot of sense. And then the new option they've added is to be able to group the database view directly from the property menu. So I can just click on this and it will group the view according to this property and then calculate. So as I mentioned, they removed calculate here at the bottom of the table view. And now if you want to calculate stuff, you just go inside of the property menu, go to calculate and then select what you want. And as you can see, it then creates a new line and it shows the total over here. And what I also really like is they've hidden the calculate name because always there was a name that always gets cut off uh, if you have a small property like this, which didn't look that good. But now you can just basically hover and you can click on calculate and also just edit it straight from this. So in my opinion, that is a massive upgrade uh, in terms of just the design and cleaning everything up. Then we have freeze and hide, which we already had. And then this one, it's not a toggle anymore. So if you want to wrap the text, you can now just click on this. So that also makes more sense. And then over here, these are going to be two options that you're going to use quite a lot because here you can insert a property to the left or insert a property to the right. So if you have a big table view database and you don't want to scroll all the way to the end, add a property and then drag it all the way back or go inside of the database menu and then drag it, you do it here. So you just click on where you want to add the property and okay, I want to add it to the right. I click on this, opens up the property menu I then give the name of the property and then select what property I want. And then obviously you have duplicate and delete property, which we already had. But yeah, as I mentioned, I have a feeling that people are going to be using the property menu a lot more moving forward. Now the next change is very subtle and it has to do with filters. Firstly, the outline of the filters over here is removed. And if you have a filter setup where it doesn't display any results, it will just show like this. So it doesn't show the actual database where you can add a new database entry. It just shows no filter results, which you can click on in order to open up the filter settings. And then this button where you can then add a page which would then match the filters. Now there is also another small change which you might not even notice, but if I have just one view like this and I choose to show the database title, it will just not show the view at all. So as you can see, normally you would have the database title and then it will show table view or whatever view you have, but now it doesn't show unless I hide the database title. But then if I do have the database title and you do want to add another view, then you would just click on this plus and then over here you can then add your other view as you can see here and then both of them will show so basically when you only have one view and the database title is showing the view name and the view itself will disappear and if you hide the database title the view will show back again and also something worth mentioning is that notion on the phone now looks a lot better because of these visual updates because yeah notion on the phone was always very messy and clunky but with this update it's a lot easier to use on the phone which is quite good i can't show you because i'm actually using my iphone to record this video but yeah check out notion on the phone it is a lot easier to use now and now for some smaller updates that you might have missed the first one is here in notion calendar so if you have a task which in this case is asking you to subscribe to my channel for more notion videos Videos. If you have a task that has a status property, you can now change the status property directly inside of Notion Calendar. So this is obviously what we want. We want to be able to change and modify our properties in Notion Calendar because otherwise it's essentially just also Google Calendar, just where you can add multiple calendars in one. Like don't get me wrong, it's already really powerful, but it would be nice if you could check off your tasks directly in Notion Calendar and change some properties. So this is a good first step towards that. So if you have a status property, it will then show. And as you can see, I got a little checkbox showing here because the status is done. Now, another small change is when you lock a page. So this is especially if you're working in a team, you can lock a page with all the databases. And usually if you click on this button, it will just unlock it again. But now you have the option to only unlock it for yourself. 
So this is if you still want to keep it locked for your team, but you just quickly want to make a change, you can just go there, click on that button and then just lock it again for yourself so you're not making accidental edits. So small but useful feature. Now the next update is to do with published pages. So if I click share in the top right and publish this page, then you'll see this big blue banner. But what you can do is you can click on manage all sites or just go inside of your workspace settings and you can toggle it on or off. So if you toggle it off, it will disappear. And now there's just this blue globe icon next to share indicating that it is live. So it's up to you whether or not you wanna show or hide it. And then two other small changes is you can embed the page. So you can click on this and you can have the embed link. And you can also click on this one to immediately share it on social media. And then in case you've missed the previous updates, you can also click on site customization in order to customize the entire site and also add a custom domain and add Google analytics and tracking links and choose whether or not it's dark or light mode. You can change the navigation bar over here so you can customize the site a bit more than you can do just by publishing it normally on Notion. Now another small update that you easily could have missed is if you have a select property. So see, I'm, I'm not used to adding the name before I add the property yet. But if you have a select property, let's just add in some random stuff in here. Then you can set up the AI autofill. So over here, you can toggle this on and the AI will then based off your description automatically tag your properties and you can also have it generate new options so yeah just something in case you've missed it you can have the AI automatically tag your database entries now another really useful update is the tab groups so if you have multiple tabs open and you're working on a project then you can just click on this click on new group and it will turn all of those tabs into a group same with folders for your bookmarks on your browser works the same way so you can just click on it and it will immediately open up all of these tabs again and here is the ungrouped ones and then yeah you can just cycle between them even if it's in different workspaces so this is in my personal workspace this is in my business workspace you can also have client projects which is in their workspace uh, like in my case because i have notion clients helping business owners so you can basically create different tab groups depending on what project you're working on and then it will immediately open up all of those pages now two more small updates that's also really useful to know about on charts you can now click on the data points and it will actually open up a filtered database view with all of the database entries that counts towards it and then another one is if you customize the layout of your database entries you can click on page settings in the top left and then you can select tabs over here and this allows you to create different tabs so this one can show all the properties and then these can be different linked views. So in this case, this shows all of my completed habits linked to the daily journal. So yeah, this is basically a way to put database entries, database views inside of the property itself based on if it is related to that property or not. So if I just close out of this and open this normally, here you have the normal page content and the properties, but then you can click on this and it will show a filtered view depending on what you want to see. So definitely go play around with all of these different features if you haven't yet. Now, what is my opinion of these new changes? Personally, I really like them. I think it makes sense. It looks clean, it looks minimal. And yeah, it makes intuitive sense why they would make these changes because they are going for the broad general market. So they want to make Notion as beginner friendly and yeah, have it not look intimidating, which I think they've done a good job with these new updates. My only concern is that they're going to simplify it down to the point where it loses functionality, like the number two formula example that I uh, talked about earlier. But all in all, I think it's a good update. It makes sense. And you know, you can always count on Notion to roll out new updates. And I know everyone is still waiting for offline mode that is coming soon. But yeah, this is a good update. In the meantime, a lot of small tweaks here and there that they've been rolling out over the past month. And then with a big one yesterday, which is why I'm making this video. So yeah, what do you think about this update? I personally like it looks good there is some things that i would just have to get used to and retrain my muscle memory but it makes sense it looks good and yeah i'm excited to see what the next notion update is going to be put your thoughts about this update in the description below be sure to give this video a like subscribe for more notion content and i'll see you in the next video